Hey, old fellow skeptics, Lester the Skeptic Tank here. Just going to provide a, a general reaction to what I saw on Thursday night when I came to Deadpool and Wolverine. I will say a little bit more about the previews prior to the Peach presentation because I'll say right away only two of however many previews I did see those are the ones, whether good, bad, indifferent, haven't stuck out to me. I suppose because I don't remember the title or titles being previewed, I suppose that's an indication for my senses anyway. Not exactly drawn to, I need to watch that movie, or I'm intrigued. So... As a teaser, the, pre the previews I'm talking about, at least the one sticking out, the red one, and Alien Romulus. Like I said, I'll say more on that later. So, cutting to the chase. Yes, I saw prior reviews and discussions about the movie, particularly with the early reviews going on, I already put the bill for a viewing well in advance, especially for IMAX. I suppose I got caught up in the hype, but it's not just about the viewing experience, but if it is touted as they say regarding IMAX, audio is going to be a part of the package as well. And I do have an up the road theater. This is a five minute walk playing on standard screening. So I'll probably see if I can sneak in a second viewing, compare my experience. And I'll say right away, I will have to think about my viewing strategy or tactics, whatever term you prefer. I have to think about possibly sitting more towards the middle, kind of what I viewed when I was watching a couple of films on Screen X, I think that's the term. But I tend to sit on the, uh, on the outer edges, just that way I can get in and out if I have to go to the bathroom. Thankfully I didn't have to. I just didn't opt to utilize my free drink coupon which funnily enough I accrued enough regal points where I can score multiple <laughs> small bags of popcorn and drinks along with free upgrades. I'll save it for when I, I, I given my health condition and post recovery, I'll have to pick my spots when I want to go for the upgrades of either or in some cases both. So the movie. I I watched the first two Deadpools. The second one, it didn't compel me to go out and... I don't know about paying full price for a physical media version of it. It's just one of those where I think there were solid points. I don't think it was boring, but I don't think it was mind-blowingly memorable where I gotta have a copy of that so maybe on a, on a whim like gotta watch it again or that's the pick-me-up I'm looking for and I and I know if I were to share with friends they have to be of a certain disposition they are comfortable with the Deadpool humor the action and, yeah, the violence, 
not for kids with a capital N, capital F, capital K. But like the first Deadpool, it was, I think, for me, it tugged the right string when the intro was playing. The music selection, the way the action scenes were choreographed, along with the dance choreography, if you want to call it that. It's like, even though I'm a martial artist, and I do tend to prefer realism in my fight scenes, it wasn't like... It wasn't to the, the level where, say, I'm watching Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and many period films, I don't know what block of time when those were released, but I'm not, I'm not really too keen on watching that kind of action. Uh, not my, not, it doesn't pull the right strings for me. The only thing I'll say is, if you're not clued into the whole, I don't know about the whole history of the Marvel I don't know. I don't know if the term would be proper to cover the Marvel films prior to the dubbing of the Marvel Cinematic or MCU. But given the, what's gone on in the last five to ten years, the MCU, as Nerd Roddick likes to talk about. And as I said, I did listen to some of the pundits. It did not derail me. I tend to think of things where Okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. And especially, like I said, with the early previews, early reviews going on, and what have you. All right, that's cute. Um, so, like I said, it got me going. Uh, like 32 flavors of Nick Weiser, talked about the simple plot. And it was simple. There wasn't much guesswork involved. It was easy to follow. You kind of had to know what was going on within the whole MCU. Especially given the track record, if you follow that. I guess you kind of had to do that kind of homework. In order to get some of the humor. But I think... I think the humor, there are parts of the scenes where the humor is injected, where, especially when you look at the chemistry between the two protagonists, Deadpool and Wolverine, uh, I think it was well done. I think there was enough where, at least between the first and second Deadpool, you, you start seeing a character arc it's not totally mind-blowing but at least you got to see some struggle and some growth I wouldn't say it's mind-blowing it's not like Luke Skywalker levels but there is redemption Uh, between uh, for both characters and I, I their humor played off each other really well I would say the cameos like many pundits have said it wasn't overdone and I thought it, I thought it was a I think the first cameo not to spoil anything the first cameo was a nice change up because you would expect and especially when you watch the movie, you had one expectation, and then it just made you remember, oh yeah, he was something else prior to what he was known for. And so I will probably say something about something having been pushed 
or discussed, teased within the last maybe couple weeks. I'll probably offer some thoughts about that. Just because I don't know about this trajectory, about what's been proposed or what's been announced. I'll say more on that later. But going back to the movie, I... The villain, say what you will. Yeah, there were some moments where, yeah, that, that was kind of cool. But then, it's, it's as though, you no, know, it's not something, it's not like to the level of Thanos. Yeah, there were some things that made you go, oh, yeah, I don't know about that, but... Yeah, uh, talking about, I guess if you were to say there was a weak point in the film, it might have been the plot, and maybe the villain. But I would say, the going back to the cameos, I, the one thing I appreciate about my viewing experience was it appeared to me in a way based on the hooting and hollering and the laughter garnered by the co from the commentary. These people were probably not your average viewer, not what, what is termed a normie these days. I am a relative normie. When it comes to Deadpool, I'm not as steeped in the lore as, say, someone like 32 Flavors of Nickelizer. Um, I only was teased about Deadpool whenever I grabbed a copy of Wizard, and honestly, I just love the cover. I just love the artwork. So whether we're talking stuff from Image, like Wildcats, Jim Lee X-Men... Um, especially when I think I first came across Deadpool was looking at the various parts of the X-Men or X-Team lore I think the cover of X-Force yes uh, particularly when I, we used to do window shopping at a nearby uh, comic book shop which was kind of like a two for because my dad used to used to buy a, a lot of fish for the aquarium back home in our podunk part of San Diego. Uh, for those who are familiar or from Paradise Hills, shout it out. <laughs> but you just go towards Spring Valley, but the, it was like a five minute car ride, and used to peruse the, the comic book. And you, I'm more of a comic card collector because, like I said, I'm more into the uh, artwork with some of the snippets of stories um, so that was my early exposure to Deadpool and then I when I worked at the call center from 2012 to 2018 I had some co-workers who were really into Deadpool so I kind of got teased about what the character was like and so I can still consider I can still consider myself relative normie again because I don't know too much of his backstory and I only got that from the coworkers I discussed him with. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks to Geek Fuel, I've got some paraphernalia about Deadpool, but I thought just based on artwork, I thought he was cool just because he had the uh, ninja swords or the katana. <laughs> you, I think this was like tying into my. I think it was either some ninja kick in the early 90s and, you know, thanks to Retro Blasting kind of exposed me to some of the ninja lore back in the 80s. Uh, but anyway, uh, so even from that perspective, these people weren't your average norm, so they, they knew what was up. And based on the cameos, and I was even more surprised by one cameo in thinking, is this the same guy that had portrayed the character back, I forget when the movie was originally released, maybe in 2008, maybe 2010, where, you know, just kind of give you a clue, he is the same dude who played uh, John Carter. Uh, he was recently, last time I saw him was, um, I don't know the actor's name, but he was on the Chris Pratt Amazon series Terminal List. He was, uh, spoiler alert, he was the prime antagonist in the series. 
Again, don't know the actor's name, but I don't think it was the same guy. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll have to do some loose duck duck goosing on that. Um, but um, I don't know how I feel about this. Uh, when I submitted my ticket at the um, you know the auditorium stand, they so this comes as part of it, and I'm like, okay, I guess it's a collectible. It's kind of cool. I don't know tech, from a technical standpoint if the film was made specifically for IMAX like Oppenheimer was from all the accounts from the various pundits on YouTube and elsewhere. Um, so, nice little souvenir I suppose. I might do something about it and maybe make, a, you know, I got a scanner, might make a post out of it or something. but. Kind of cool. Yeah, I didn't have the funds for a popcorn bucket. There were some aspects I will likely touch upon in another video. Particularly when it comes to costuming. It's going to delve into the aspect of, I suppose, I think with this particular title or franchise, when it came out versus what I saw as a kid with the animated series, what turned me off was the costuming or lack thereof. You might be able to take a pick of what that it was or was. So, again, going back to, especially if you know about the costuming in the movie and what people were jazzed about, as we were getting teased up until release. Like, could this have it worked at the time? Did they not have the technology to pull this costuming off? So, many of different directions I can go with this, but that's my out of the theater impression since having seen it on Thursday night. And it, as of this recording, is Sunday night. So, I'll say more on the previews. And for those who did watch the movie and the previews, chime in the comments. What were your memorable previews that made you say, I'm going to go out to the theater and watch it? Or, given how scheduling of releases are these days, you might just go, well, that that's streaming based quality there. I'm just gonna wait till it hits whatever streaming provider you may use. Alright, I'll say more later fellow skeptics. Until next video, peace out and I'll catch you on the other side. Hey fellow skeptics. Thank you very much for watching this video. And if you like what you see and want to get updates, feel free to subscribe. And if you do, and you want to make sure you get notifications for any of my videos, just make sure when you hit that subscribe button, you just make, you specify all when you choose the notification type. Versus personal, I'd have to tag you. And as always, feel free to drop a comment. I believe that works out better for me. You help guide what I can provide you guys and helps further the conversation. So without any further ado, until next time, peace out fellow skeptics and I'll catch you all on the other side. Hey fellow skeptics, thank you very much for watching this video, and if you like what you see and want to get updates, feel free to subscribe, and if you do, and you want to make sure you get notifications for any of my videos, just make sure when you hit that subscribe button, you just make, you specify all when you choose the notification type. Versus personal, I'd have to tag you. And as always, I 
feel free to drop a comment. I believe that works out better for me. You help guide what I can provide you guys and helps for the, the conversation. So without any further ado, until next time, peace out fellow skeptics and I'll catch you all on the other side.